Okay. As Ross said to you earlier, if you have more time, we'd probably get a bestseller. Well, well, you know, maybe <laughs> we're, we're, we'll come back to this in a few years' time and, and, and go a bit deeper. Hello, I'm Stephen Marriott, and welcome to my podcast show, Marriott Side Trips. I'm an author, traveller, and now podcaster. And this is the show where I share the stories of the people I meet along the way, because everyone has a story worth telling. But as we all know, travel has been a bit tricky of late, so for my first episodes, I've been getting to know some people closer to home in London. I've been meeting who you might call the butchers, bakers and the candlestick makers as a nursery rhyme once collectively referred to various tradespeople as those independent traders and artists who've been keeping local London ticking over during the lockdowns. And for my second episode, I'm chatting to Mitch Cohen, a London taxi driver. Obviously, the pandemic hasn't been good for business, so he's temporarily switched back to his former profession of building. London cabbies are known for being talkative, and Mitch didn't let me down. Get ready for some frank conversation. Hi, Mitch. How are you doing? I'm cool. Thank you very much, Stephen. Good. How are you? I'm not too bad, thanks. And uh, yeah, thank you for giving up some of your time on this Saturday afternoon to uh, chat to me on on the uh, podcast show. Not a problem. I think we've got plenty of time at the moment. Uh, I think that's what we've got plenty of now, isn't (laughs) it? Yes, yes. Hopefully I'll use this time wisely then and uh, and, uh, get your your story. But you're Mitch Cohen. Uh, You're a Londoner born and bred, I believe. Yeah. And um, in normal circumstances, you're a, a London cabbie, a, t- a taxi driver. Um, so just t- t- just to expand on that a bit, just tell us a bit more about you know who you are and um, what you do. Yeah, so as you said, generally for the last, well, coming on five years, been a London cab driver. Uh, sort of got into the trade probably eight years ago now, because after studying the knowledge for three and a half years, I sort of got out the trade I was in, which was a building industry to mm-hmm. get into the cab trade. and. Uh, here we are now, five years down the line after finishing my knowledge, sort of back in the building trade for, from the uh, effect of the pandemic, really. Well, yes, I mean, obviously there isn't much, there isn't much um, tourists or business people, um, you know, to obviously to take from A to B at the moment. And I've, I've been into Waterloo, for example. And I mean, there's always long queues of black cabs out the back there. Yeah, on Spur the, Road, yeah, yeah. Exactly, but they're moving. Um, yeah. And this time, you know, when I, the last time I went was in that neck of the woods. There's just no one at Waterloo Station, you know, the busiest no. station in London. So yeah, so obviously, yeah, you but you were you adapting and doing and, and going back to what you um your, your old trade. At well, moment, yeah, then. because my, my trade was bricklaying, so I've had to sort of you know you've got to go where where you can earn a yeah. crust really. So yeah. I've had to go back to doing something that I didn't want to be doing now at fifty, fifty one. Yeah, that's why I, three and a half years was one of the toughest things I've done in my life. The knowledge, you know, <laughs> mentally in all fashions, how it affected my home life and, and one thing and another, it just constant. It was a real, real battle, especially doing it, I think, later on in life, because I don't think the brain is as absorbent as it is as a younger man. So it is quite a, quite a hardship. So. I can imagine. And we'll, we'll come on for people who don't know what the knowledge is, because it's something which is unique to, to London and being yeah. a cabbie. So we'll talk about a bit more about that. But so I'm curious then in that case, yes, so at the moment it's a temporary thing that you're, yes. you're going back to your old profession yep. of, of you know, being a brickie and, and building. But what, what made you change profession in the first place to become a taxi driver? Yeah, I suppose I'd, we'd had a, I'd lived out, out, out of the country for, for 10 years, practically 10 years or right. so. It's where my son was born, in, out in one of the uh, Spanish islands. And uh, when I came back initially to England, my partner and my son were still in Spain. I was here. A lot of my mates had done the knowledge and I thought it may be a good idea, something different to do. But looking at it at the time, quite a long part of your life, I needed to earn money. So I went straight back into the building trade. And over the 10 to 15 years, I had to, I was thinking, so I need to do something that I can do later on in life that's okay. not going to be infected by the weather or how, how well my body mm-hmm. copes with, Sure. aging and, and the physical side of the job so so I reverted back to the idea of the knowledge again so you know I sort of it, it was one of those I and I'm just going to say very quickly that the knowledge is the test that you have to have to be a hackney London yes yeah, so they call driver. the whole process of becoming a London taxi driver is called the knowledge right the, so it's the test the learning process the whole thing cover the knowledge covers the whole rigmarole of it all okay and we, we, i want to talk is, about that a bit more yeah. detail you know with so, the likes of uber so, and so, these days. yeah i wanted to look at something i could do longer into in my life something that wasn't so stressful on your body and 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 the job that i could do in all weathers yeah and but i was sense. still my own boss 
Okay, so yeah, working for yourself. And and have you always liked driving in a sense then? Is that, uh, did you just, or did you probably, just think? No, it's probably not been one of my, my favourite pastimes. Okay. I think probably when I was in the building industry, my worst bit of the day would be the, the commuting to work and commuting back, travelling, mm -hmm. you know, sitting in, you know, a 12 mile journey that can take you two hours sometimes because you're sitting bumper to bumper in London, rush hour traffic, coming home and going to work. So, yeah, so driving probably isn't probably, <laughs> which is a bit of a weird thing to say, I suppose, but it's not, it wouldn't have been something I said, oh, yeah, I quite like driving, I'm going to do that. Mm. I quite like the idea of it all, though. Yeah. It was quite, it, it was quite a, I don't know, what's the word? It was an attraction to, I quite like the, the whole cab side, you know, and yeah. I like London, I like the history of yeah. London, and a lot of that comes into that job. Yeah. And so, and which I'm learning, and we had a bit of a you know a brief chat beforehand. That I think you you know you're obviously a people's person. You like to yeah. talk, and that has to be one of the good yeah. qualifications to to be a good cabbie because that's the distinction for me. When you get a private cab or you get an Uber, you get into a London you know a London taxi, and they're a fountain of knowledge, really. Yeah. And you know, yeah. and the, I guess you have to be a people person, do you? What helps? It helps because there are, uh, believe it or believe it not, that and you do, and then there's another thing with judging public and having that uh, maybe social skills to see. Where you you you've got there are a lot of people don't want to talk yes. when they get in the cab. Yeah. They don't want to have the conversation. They just want to sit in the back of the cab, either say nothing mm -hmm. or they go. They're doing work on their laptops or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. But you do. You have to judge some people, and you pretty much know within the first few minutes of them getting in the cab whether it's someone who okay. wants to have a chat or doesn't. Yeah. You know. And that's interesting. So who who are the people then that that want to have a chat? Don't, or maybe you know, are just grumpy and cause you a problem. Yeah, is you it, know, does it, it just depend? You just I mean, don't know. It just depends. Yeah, you yeah. just don't. You know, it's sort of you can. In obviously, through I think working with public generally in lots of jobs I've done through my life, you get to sort of bit of a, a an idea of a type of person where you think you can yeah. sort of judge them a little bit by you know it's a bit of a thing as they get back to get in the cab. You sort of had a bit. Well, I wonder if this is going to be a moaner or a, <laughs> or is it going to be someone you can have a chat with? You yeah. know and. You know, a lot of the conversations revolve around the same subject most of the time. The traffic in London, the roadworks, <laughs> Uber, you know, all these Weather, sort of, of they tend to be, you know, gen general conversations yeah. you end up having unless you're dealing with, with the tourists. And then that that's a totally different sort of angle of conversation because they're more interested in where they are, what things are and, you know. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. it's it, 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 you, every customer is a different person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they could, you know, sometimes the people that you think are going to be miserable are the best customers you've had all day. <laughs> then you get some, it could be your first job of the day is the first customer. If it's a agro customer or just it, it, it could upset your day, that could for the next two hours or so, it sort of sort of upset the, the, the apple cart of your day. Yeah, you know, so. And do you sort of see that as part of the service, though? The fact that depending yeah. on judging somebody's mood, they, they, you know, they do want to talk. They want to be social yeah. or not. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you can't help it if you are like if you are a talker and it's just generally you've got that manner about you. Yeah. you whether they're talkers or not, you'll always have that initial try and sort of you know have a bit of a conversation. But then obviously you have to realise if they're not, you've just got to. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Okay. That's interesting. So I guess it can be quite a lonely job at times if oh, you have a run of people. Then they don't want to talk or they're yeah. just fixated about A to B sort of thing. Yeah, it's pretty. You know, you talk to a lot. Of, there, I think there's there's stats and about it that it is quite. It is a pretty lonely job, really. Right. You know, yeah. it's like I said, if you if you are, and sometimes if it's a slow go day and you're not getting many punters in, and so you you know it, it is. You know, I think mm. now a little bit different if you're sitting in a rank with social media. Not that I'm a big fan of that. Yeah sort of stuff but with the phones and stuff now you can talk to another mate of yours cab driver while you're uh -huh. sitting on the rank so is but i don't tend to sort of get out and talk much to other cab drivers the only odd couple i might know that i would i've got mm. a lot of friends that were my friends before they were cab drivers right. so yeah so yeah it's uh but you have those little haunts you go to where a lot of cab drivers use you know mm -hmm. we we sort of different places you have certain not every day you go a lot of cab drivers go to the same places all the time to eat and they do it every day at the same time I'm not, I, once I'm out, I'm working. Normally, if I stop, it'd be on a Friday or a Thursday evening. I'd stop and have an hour and have something to eat with a couple of the boys I know, That's drivers. But, yeah. but Waterloo was one of our haunts Friday at Superfish. Master See, Superfish. I've been there. there well, that's, a, yeah, that's, like that, a, that's Friday night. Well, it's, that's, a, it's a brilliant fish and yeah, chip place, yeah, it's isn't great. it? And, 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 yeah. and they're great there as well. They look after the cab drivers. You know, we're regular. We, we're regular. It's just a great little. And that's our regular on a thir on a Friday. And probably my regular on a Thursday. Yeah, I've been with, there on a Friday with, with cabbies there. Yeah, and you yeah. see the taxis outside. Outside there. all parked so like, up. Sort of like, you know, I don't know. 
um, London cabby mafia, I always think. You well, know, yeah, but it's just one of those port of calls. There's yeah. lots of them dotted around London. And yeah, so, I mean, Thursdays would be Warwick Road, the uh, the kebab the kebab shop on Warwick oh, really? Road. Yeah. yeah, which is uh, it's, uh, Cyprus Mangal, I think it's okay. called. But that would be, that's my... If I'm going to eat out, because because Thursdays and Fridays would be my 12-hour shift, so I, right. it's a long day. It's a one yeah. o'clock in the afternoon to one o'clock in the morning, if not beyond, depending on how busy you are. So I that see. would be your sort of where generally the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'd do a day shift. I'd do yeah. a sort of morning through to evening, sort of seven, eight o'clock times. And is that sort of more towards the end of the week, Thursday, if I'm thinking, okay, I'm getting a bit of the nightlife trade as it's well? Busy, busy, it's your busiest two days yeah, of the In week. the West End, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's Thursday, Fridays, everybody's out, the city's busy. People, yeah. And Thursdays, Thursdays is a new, new Friday in the city. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. call it Thirsty Thursdays, I think, is yeah. what the city bods call it, because a lot of them don't live in London, so they like to get drunk on a Thursday. <laughs> after A lot of them don't even work, Don't they work from home on a yeah. Friday anyway. Even before the lockdown or, stuff, they people exactly. work from home, yeah. So they'd, they'd do the old sort of thirsty Thursday, get absolutely wrecked, and <laughs> uh, and then, then either they deal with a hangover on the Friday at work, and then they, they haven't got to suffer over the weekend once they're back in wherever they live in their little suburbias or wherever. Yeah, so, okay. So, um, so does, that, do you, does that mean you tend to stay stick to the same patches then? Yeah, I, I have an area that I well, I'll go anywhere wherever right. I pick someone up. And they want to go, I'll take them anywhere they want yeah. to go. But uh, I generally work because here it's a lovely. I, I drive in through Chelsea Harbour, so I do the Kings Road oh, in. Yeah, and generally, so. I'm hitting yeah. work as soon as I get into the Kings Road or Chelsea Harbour. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because yeah, so I should have said we were in Southfields, which for people who don't know, which is um, you know uh, southwest London. Yes. So you'll you'll be heading up towards Fulham, Chelsea. Yes. That way into yep. the West End. That way into the West End, and right. and then I would generally work Mayfair in the West End I would see. be the area that I patrol, if you want to okay. call it patrolling or yeah. whatever you want to call it, <laughs> fishing. Fishing. Yeah. yeah trawling. Yeah. Trawling. Yeah. Okay. And I love the fact though that you said you have your your, your favourite places like the kebab place on the on yeah. on, 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 on the Friday and the, Thursday and the, and the fish and chips yeah, on a Friday, Friday. Yeah. And as I say, I've been in there, I've seen the cabbies, but you just reminded me of something that's always fascinated me about um, um, L- London and, and cabbies. Those kind of I don't know what you call them, but those green like, huts, small, the little green huts, yeah. so like Victorian in style. Yeah. And I guess they must have been when there was horse and carriage. They were. One. Do you ever use those? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, What's the, what are they like? Because like, it's kind of like I see that, and I was well, like, they're like a, the public can't use those. They're like a they, special thing, aren't they? Public can take away from them. Take they away. can go to the hatch. Yeah. That they can walk up to the hatch and take a take away yeah. from there, but they're not allowed to sit inside. Because they're quite minute as well, aren't they're they? They're not very big. You know, yeah. you get sort of half a dozen at a squeeze in. Yeah. Them. But yeah, they're uh, they're the cabbies. Cabbies sort of cafes, if if that's what you want to call them. Green right. huts, they're called. Green huts, yeah. yeah. I, wonder, I always wonder what they're called. But yeah, and unfortunately, yeah. there's a lot of them that are not used anymore because of just how things change and, you yeah. know, time and... Competition and Yeah, stuff. competition yeah. and, yeah, you didn't have all the sort of... You had cafes, didn't you, back in the day where, you know, it, it, now you've got food on every corner, every street. You've got <sighs> just... And, I mean, work in the West End or Mayfair, you're driving around... You know, you're in Berkeley Square, you're here, you've got all the different sushi places, yeah. quickly you can run yeah. in, you can get a prep manger, yeah. you can get this, you can get, you know, so... And a lot of Middle Eastern food Well, a lot way, of the, yeah. another one of the big haunts of the cab drivers, which is the piccolo bars. You've got them in the city, oh, yeah, the pic- you've, got, yeah, you've yeah. got them in I Mayfair, know you yeah. know, they're quite a big haunt of the yeah. cab drivers as well. Yeah. But they're they're open super hours, so they're people, but, you know, they these are all places that were... The first sort of, you know, places where the takeaways, the cast before you had all these other franchises of food thrown in your face, really. I mean, prep manger's and everything else, it's every other shop now, isn't it? You know, there's yeah. so many. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, literally the same company. You go into London, you've got three different three of the same company on the same road within four different shop spaces. Pints and movements from all these, yeah, these uh these these branded yeah. uh, uh, chains. But so, so you've got obviously mates then, which you, as you say, you've got your own network of friends yes. from building trade yeah, who you, yeah. you, you, you catch up with. But you've obviously got some mates which you see on the Friday or the Thursday. Yeah, these yeah, places. yes, and, yeah. So and what does a taxi driver talk about when, when, you, when you meet I try them? not to talk about the cab. Yeah. A lot of cab drivers do. You get yeah. the, you get the sort of cab drivers that like to moan. Yeah. They moan about their blame. Well, the last every, customer or something. Well, they're or, just, the... or they're moan about every reason why they've not taken any money. Okay. Blame everybody. You know, once upon it was the night tube. Now it's Uber. Now it's this. Now it's right. that. Yeah, yeah. Or you get ones. I'm a bit. Just get on with it and earn your money and go home. It's yeah. not. You know, and the money is there to be earned if you want to put the hours in. And really? the trade okay. has changed. And if you don't change with it, like any industry, mm-hmm. you get left behind. I think. 
And I think that's a good point to mention the, the knowledge at an Uber yeah. because I mean, yeah, obviously I've been, a, you know, I've been a customer in the, in the back of a, a cab, and uh, you know, you get mixed opinions on things like yeah. Uber and stuff. And but obviously, it hasn't been good for the trade because it's a new competition. But maybe you take a, a well, different I view. But I mean, well, firstly, I just want to, can you explain to everyone exactly what the, the knowledge is? I mean, I know okay. a bit about it because I think that ties in, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, because you've got I, a different yeah, skill. Without, uh, without, uh, it's quite it's been too long winded. It's quite difficult. I mean, one thing I can say: the knowledge they they compare with. They, they reckon it's the equivalent to do a medical or a law degree. That's how intense really? it is. It's on the same... Uh, they say that the, the study of the knowledge itself is the equivalent of a law or a medical degree. Yeah. It's, listen, it's, it's taken anyone from... Some people I know have taken five years. I've done it in three and a half years. Some people four. But it's a genuinely between the three to four year mark, which is a degree. It's, yeah, well, it's, absolutely. You know, yeah. So, yeah, so the knowledge of London, it's... <laughs> You have to, you apply you you go through the rigmarole the paperwork then they give you a thing called a, you get called up to do a map test okay which you get a booklet that you read and study and then you go in to do this map test you'll sit in a classroom at the TFL building or wherever it was to, uh, down in in Blackfriars and you sit at there it's a bit of paper and literally names of places come out and you have to write them on where they are in on the map of London. So you get a certain percentage, you pass your map test, then you wait to hear for your appearances, which are your verbal examinations. So there's stages of, there's 56s on your appearances, which means you go up every two months for an appearance, which is an exam, verbal exam. Then it goes to 28, so you're up every month. And then it goes to 21, so you're up every 21 days. Okay, gosh. Then once you get through that, if you pass all that, yeah. Then you get what they call your rec, your recommendation. Okay. Then they give you another book and they say, right, go off and learn all the suburbs now. The suburbs. So Greater so, London then? Greater London. So you're out to, all the way out to Loughton and Essex that way. Right. You're going out to High Barnet, Barnet and beyond. Mm -hmm. the Watford areas. Then you're going out to Heath Row and you have to learn all of the airport roads. Uh, so yeah, anything within the twenty in the twenty five really within the M twenty five, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So and so the purpose is, I mean, in, I guess in a nutshell, then is that if a punter gets into the back of your cab, yep. you have to in your head in your memory um, know the quickest route, straightest quickest route to their and, destination. And so the knowledge is building up all that that knowledge ahead, and then obviously there's there's um, Sequential tests yes. to be able to prove to the examiners that, that you're doing the, the work, that you're doing the work, and you can, and you can do that. Yeah. So yeah. what they'll do on appearances, you have to, you have seven at each stage. You have seven appearances. And appearances in, 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 with an examiner. Yes. Yeah. Who is a cab driver? Okay. They are cab drivers. So your your like so your appearance. So what they do once you've done your map test and in between getting your appearances, you can go to a knowledge school, which helps with your learning. Right. Okay. Which you have to pay for yourself. Yeah. So. But you're, you'll get a, what they call the blue books. There's four blue books, and you have to, and they're all street, they're runs, and you go out on your scooter and you follow. They're in all different areas of London, and you follow the names of the street, and that is the route that you take. Now, they're called your runs, and these you have to practice daily. You call them over repeatedly daily, okay? So till they're in in embedded in your brain, wow. because what they reckon in the knowledge is that street names are short term memory. Points, which when you have to go and gather points, they call it, are buildings, places, hotels, hospitals, anything really, restaurants, bars. It's like a landmark, yeah? Landmarks. Wow. So what they say is uh, street names, short-term memory, landmarks, long-term okay. memory. We know that, I think, ourselves. By I can live, I've lived around this area 20 years, but I don't know all the names of the roads. No. But I know you do a right at that pub. <laughs> yeah. or, or, yeah. So that yeah. does, you know, yeah. work. So... Where you're doing, then you do all your books, then you have to go out and get the points they ask you to gather. So points came out and you have to go and find where they are in London. So, mm. so when you go into an appearance, you'll sit there like a shaking, waiting to go in. You don't know what examiner you're going to get. And you know, different examiners have different you know, things. Oh, he's a hard one. He's this, he's that. So it's a bit like a driving test in a way. Then, But, but you're obviously having to get to somewhere with the examiner there and yeah, prove that you're you not know actually, how to get there. Yeah, but it's right. You're not doing it physically. You're sitting. You literally, you'll be sitting waiting. All of a sudden, the door opens and they say, Mr. Cohen. And you'll think, you see who it is. You think, oh, I've got Mr. McDowell or I've got so and so. <laughs> so you walk in. And a lot of these examiners have certain bankers. You right. know that they ask a lot. Yeah. So. So, you brush so, up on that, obviously. So you sort of get them in your head because if you get one of them, you don't want to not get a score on it. So 
then you'll g literally go in. He's sitting at a desk over there with a raised table with a map on. You have to sit against where the door is in your chair. Good morning, sit down. And then uh, it's quite cold in there. It's not, yeah. I mean, I've seen a couple of times when they've shown bits on the TV, documentary, and you think they're never like that with you. You know, they're, <laughs> they're playing up for the camera here, you yeah. know. So you sit against the wall, and they'll, they'll, say, they'll sit there, and they'll put the time to go, right, Mr. Cohen, uh, this they might say to say to me, the uh, gardener's public house. So I'll say, uh, is that the one in Wandsworth, sir? Yes, Mr. Cohen. And then I'll say, that's uh, Longfield Street and Merton Road, sir. He'll say, that's correct. Take me from there to the London Eye. I'll tell him what road the London's Eye on. Then I'll sit there for a minute or so. And then they go, right, off you go. My and God. then I have to sit there and call it, calling all the street names, the straightest, direct, no legal right or left turns. Jeez. Some of them, when you get further down the line, there was one exam, and he'd ask you to do a run, but you weren't allowed to go for any traffic lights. So you'd have to know the run to avoid That's the light. That's amazing. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. It's amazing because I think, I mean, I think if you're a Londoner, you've probably heard of the knowledge, but you know, but you don't know exactly what it, what it is. To really appreciate the actual fact that London cabbie, it, it has got the knowledge and skills to take you from A to B, the fastest route. Obviously, yeah. you can't account for traffic, yeah. et cetera. Exactly. Um, but, you know, as you say, that kind of study. So, I mean... Because when mean, you study yeah. the knowledge, it's done on the, done on the, as if there is no traffic. Right. So, yeah. so you can't, you know, <laughs> no. so it's done as if you're, yeah. you've got the road to yourself. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously you make judgments then as a, yeah. you know, you know, depending on things. So, so how does that then sit with you against, you know, a, a, I mean, obviously there's always been private mini cabs. Cabs, yeah. You know, but now you've got the rise of Uber. Yeah. Um, you know. Ride uh, and ride and all those things which operate off you know sat navs yeah. and their and their their smartphones and things and they don't have to do that but their competition and you know they can they're a lot more convenient for a younger generation yes. use of smartphones yeah. so I mean obviously there has been cabby strikes and things blocking up roads yeah. and things which I um, don't get involved you, in so, I'm so not you're, a, you're, 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 you're you I'm not militant like that no, no, I don't no. see I, I think it's a bit Neanderthal I think yeah. I I'm part of, I'm a member of the LTDA union and a lot of cabbies think they're not strong enough they're not not militant enough they're a bit yeah. sort of but they i think the way they go lobby in parliament and i think that's the way forward right blocking up loads of roads and upsetting our public and our punters no if they can't get home at the, at the end of the night yeah. isn't doing us any favors not, well i guess yeah, you, you get, you, you especially get people when you've hub, got, don't you? especially when you've got the competition out there you've got now yeah why why just throw them into the back of other people's cars yeah you know, you, you're putting them into their yourselves. There's, there's other ways of doing it. And you, uh, surely by now, the old sort of trade unionist sort of less strike and all that, it's, it's old hat. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it just doesn't, yeah. we're not that country anymore. Yeah. You know, and I just think there's a better way with it. But what going back, sorry, Steve, to what you were saying, I when I got out, Uber was already there. So I knew no difference. I guess it was. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. It's like the card machines. Yeah. Had to have them when I got out. Yeah. So all those moans about Uber, it ain't what it used to be and da da da. I've never owned any different. Yeah. And I still went out there and earned a good living. And so, you were prepared to go into that environment knowing there was this actual I have an app. I, have, I know. I've got, I don't not that I use it all the time, but I'm part of a taxi app. So yeah. I've got that. Yeah. You so you do get buy. business that way yeah. as well. Yeah. But it's it's a different way because the, the app business, app rides, they solely rely on app jobs where we don't. So it's not as, so would you say, in a sense, effective as Uber, because you know that's all they're getting their, their fares from. But I'm getting hands yeah. on the street as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess the difference is that, you know, um, I mean, technically it's self you're self-employed if you work yeah. for Uber, although there's, there's change coming in well, with this whole yeah. gig economy stuff. And obviously they do have to be treated as as, as work employees. Yes. Um, so I guess there's a difference. Is there a different mindset that like, you still work for yourself? Or you, you're working for Uber effectively if you if if you're a driver for them. Yeah, I mean, but for me, I'm a self sole yeah. trader, aren't yeah. I? You know, it, I'm just going that the whole Uber situation to me. I, my old opinion on Uber has always been ever since I've got I've got no issue with competition because I think competition's healthy. You need competition. It's the yeah. way of the world. Every industry's mm. changed. Doesn't yeah. matter what you've done twenty years ago. It's different now. Yeah. Financial sector. I have them in the back of the cab from Goldman Sachs. They say the same. We have to put more hours in now to what we did in yeah. whenever. And my only thing with Uber has always been a safety element. It's yes. the safety factor yeah. that I can't. You know, because it's really it's, you, it's like your dad or your granddad drops you off to school. Yeah. Jumps in the car, wax lives in somewhere in Dorset, puts a sat nav in, drives into London, and 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 takes people around. And there's no hire and reward insurance. There's no. I, I've had day. You're driving down one way streets, and you've got Uber drivers driving up <laughs> yes. and towards you, and yeah. going round roundabouts. I had one going around the Aldwych. 
the wrong way no around way. the Aldwych. Wow. Listen, I've seen them driving into underpasses, like pedestrian under... It, this is my issue. It's yeah, the safety, safety factor. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That's a lot of... Yeah, and I mean, yeah, we've all seen Uber drivers. They don't... They're so reliant on the apps and things. They're not watching they the road. They, they don't and know, they where don't they're know going. the road signs half yeah. of them. That's not being disrespectful to anybody. No, it's, no. And it isn't. I had to also, once I'd passed the noise, I had to do a, an advanced, go to a, a proper driving uh, examination centre like anybody else would and be have another test in my mm -hmm. cab before I would yeah. get fully licensed. You know, it's yeah. just... Oh, it's safety to me. Yeah. It's like anything. It's if you've had so many accidents or so many this happened and so many that, and or, or if you had and you was an you was an aircraft company, you'd be taken out the sky. Yes. Or if you and then the last time Uber had the court thing going on, not the one recently with the Supreme Court over the payment stuff, but the one where the they wouldn't relicense them TFL yes, because yeah. of safety issues, but because they was appealing, they was they was allowed to continue working. Now I'm sorry, I never understood How that. How can no. you be <laughs> not not given a license for safety, but you can carry on working? If it was again, if it was an aircraft company, you'd be taken well, out of the sky. It's Boeing, not, they stopped, didn't they? You know, when, when they had their safety this issue. Has yeah. Always been because, as far as I'm concerned, from what I've learned in the short time I've been in yeah. the trade, is that black cab users use black cabs. Uber users use Uber. I think they might have taken 2.5% 2, 2 of our trade, 5% maybe. Is that well, all? Okay. Well, I think so. I yeah. could be completely you wrong. You mean from what your experience? My yeah. experiences yeah. are. So, and obviously areas you work. So, and I would have said that the people that use Uber now, the younger generation, because it's easy, it's cheap, and it, it's tech, and they like it. And it would have been the night bus users or the night tube users, yes, yeah. which would have never used black cabs anyway. Yes, yeah. Unless it was the very last resort where there was five of them yeah. and they could all chip in to pay for it. But generally speaking, mm. what, on my, what I've experienced work in the trade is that these people would have been night buses, tube right. users, yeah. mini cab users. Yeah, yeah. Not black cab users anyway. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to dwell too long on this, but no. I think it's interesting just to hear, you know, a, you know your perspective on it. But like, Tell me, what's the um, the strangest person you've had in the cab that you remember? Yeah, and again, I'm putting you on the spot here because I didn't, I didn't, strangest person I didn't warn you in advance. The strangest person yeah. I've had. Well, I've had two that was quite different. One was I picked a girl up outside the Washington Hotel in Mayfair. She jumped in the cab. She said, uh, "Can you take me to Lloyd's Bank?" I said, "Well, it's only round the corner." Okay. On Barclay Square. She said, "Yeah, but I've got to do something first. I said, "All oh, right, okay then." And as I pulled away, she just got undressed in the back of my cab, straight down to her undies. <laughs> Young girl, straight down to her undies, got all changed, run to the bank, come out, paid me, said thanks. So you had no idea what that was about then? Well, you can only guess in those areas, can't you? Uh, you well, know. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> She's come out of a hotel, I don't know. Yeah, and got some money. And think then, about yeah, it, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then probably the strangest, <laughs> I've had some strange drunks can be quite strange, but on a, a sort of normal daily, I was sitting outside... Didn't so long in the hotel on the Claridge's, on that, the range yeah. of Claridge's. The guy walked up to me, sort of short haircut, suited, knocked on the window. He said, uh, you, yeah, I said, mate, jump in. You want to go to Fitzroy Square okay. at, at the back of uh, Houston Road at the top there. Yeah, yeah. So he's got in the cab, sort of spun the cab round, and he's chatting away. And he said, oh, he said, you're probably going to think I'm really mad. I said, no, go on, mate. I said, you'd be surprised the people I get in the cab and what the conversation's about. I said... I said, I'm a bit mad myself, mate, you know, so jump in. <laughs> so, so he said to me, he said, no, he said, I've, uh, he said, you know, all the uh, the monarchy and all people that are in sort of high up in government and uh, and uh, in the entertainment business and stuff, they're all women. Or, or they're all vice versa of what they are, the queen. I've heard the lizard one about it, but this guy who said, Ant and Deck, they're women. So sort of David Icke sort of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah but David Icke was more a Jesus thing. But this, I, but then he got, he, I think it was a stroke flat earther as well. Right, because okay. what happened as we carried on yeah. on the journey, he worked for a Middle Eastern royal family okay. in Mayfair. He reckons they're all tra transgender is what they all were. This right. is, they're all trans. That's what this he was what, saying. Okay. This is what he said. They're all trans. Uh, yeah, Ant and Deck, uh, Ant and Joshua. Okay. Uh, and he said, you know, he said, oh, I can't wait to get out of here. He said, I'm, you know, I said, what are you from? And he said, yeah, I said, whereabouts? He went Bromley. I said, oh, we're at Kent, but go on. And he's cracking on. But it, and, and, and everybody and anything was. And then as we got closer to the destinations, yeah, the, 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 the Arab person I'm going to see now, she's one as well, trans. <laughs> and then 
he said, oh, and by the way, this is a wait and return. I thought, oh, no, I've got him on the way back as well. What's it, what's it going to be on the way back? So the, on the way back, it, the flat earth thing started up. Okay. You know, that the, the, the water is, there's no, you know, obviously gravity's not really there. The water, all the, all the mountains and the uh, uh, certain places, these flat top mountains, where does the water go? It was really sort of... Wow. And I was never expecting this, this, this right? you know, yeah. this guy was taking a bit of documentation in a big envelope to somewhere on Fitzroy Square, <laughs> it suited and booted, and then went into a whole thing about the, the royal family, government. Uh, so he looked like the most respectable yeah, kind of just person. just a young guy, in his yeah. third, no, I mean, in his early 30s, you know. Yeah. So... Yeah. Well, maybe it's something about a, ta a, ta a taxi driver. They think they can open up and share yeah, well, all their do. concerns You are a bit like an ag issues. agony aunt. You yeah. are. You know, yeah. I've had all sorts of girls, girls pouring out their bits to me and <laughs> all upset. I've had, you know, it's, you know, it's been a, it is a, I like it. It's, it, it's an experience, the walks of life and the things yeah. you see while you're at work. Yeah. You know, it is, it is an eye opener. And, yeah. and London is, as a city, is a fantastic city, but... You know, and an eye opener. Some of the, even not just not in your cab, what you witnessed. I had some guy one night. I'd picked up a guy in the in Soho with some office furniture. He was going out to Essex somewhere. As we was coming down, uh, we was in Old Compton Street, turning to Greek Street or something like that. All of a sudden, some guy chose this all, all stunted threw himself onto the bonnet of my cab to try and pretend that I'd run him over. My God. And then went through loads of bargaining stuff with me. I'll get a tenner, mate, and I'll just go. I'm giving you a tenner. He's all one get was like batting and boss. I'll tell you what, I'll just phone the police. Oh no, you don't have to do that. He said, just tell you what, look, you must up my trainer there. He said, just give me give me some money from your trainer. I said, Matt, your trainer's falling apart, mate. It's nothing I've done. Yeah. I said, you've just thrown yourself on the bonnet. So I've had, you know, it's been some Interesting. Well I guess um Maybe having some, you know, a bit of you know, um, being a bit streetwise yeah. and stuff, and maybe coming from helps. London that helps a bit. But um, and that's something we didn't talk about your background. So you, you're a Londoner. Are you from this area? Or? No, um, my family how from South East London, South Bermondsey. East London. Yeah, Bermondsey. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I grew up outside of London. A lot of my team, my parents were publicans. Oh, okay. So we moved about quite a bit, to Did be you, honest. Oh, between, between yeah. when, they, when they were the change landlord, of the yeah, club or yes, whatever. yes, yeah, because they started as managers. But I mean, I've lived in. Kent, Essex, Devon, Hampshire, Norfolk, yeah. and uh, and like well, I said, Bermondsey I must spell out in That Spain. must have been difficult. A well, challenge. It's horrible for schooling for me. Yeah. I mean, I've my siblings as well, but I mean, I think I pretty much spent sort of through my comprehensive schooling. You know, I was at a different school near enough every every year. It seemed like well, it seemed like that yeah. across because London, what, obviously south east. Well, south east, the south east, and southeast, yeah, yeah, Devon. They had two pubs in Devon. Oh, really. Yeah, so I'd done a bit of school in there. So my main, my teens were spent in, in Essex. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was down, my mum's still there, down on the coast. They had a couple of pubs down there, Clacton, Holland-on-Sea, around there. Oh, nice, okay. Yeah, so I... Although, but that part of the world, South East is your, is your, yeah, is your part of yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a bit in Kent as well. But yeah, we all hail out of South East London, Bermondsey, Rotherhive area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but my father was from the Black Country. Although his Birmingham, parents, okay, yeah, right. he was he was from Dudley, Dudley, but, okay. uh, parents Jewish of Jewish heritage. So you that's know, Cohen. That's yeah, where the name yeah, comes yeah. from. Okay, there's a Sicilian Jew, Jews, and then we got family. We had family in, in Poland as well. So yeah, my grandparents came over from from Sicily on his okay. side, but I was brought up predominantly by my stepfather. Your stepfather, yeah, okay. who was a Londoner. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Good health. And you. They're really enjoying chatting to you. And um, the, just wanted to pick up on, on the point about adapting and switching careers and, and things like that. And um, you know, we, we talked about, you know, you in Ibiza and yeah. d doing this and that, I guess you, yeah, might, yeah. you might say. And, and, and um, five years, is it five years as a taxi driver? Would have been so five far, years this July. It would have been five years this July. Okay. And so well, now, I still am, Captain. Yeah, I've still yeah, got yeah, my license, yeah, so but actually that's working, your yeah. That's yeah. your profession, but you're obviously with with the lockdown and things. Third lockdown now, we, we're, yeah. we're coming out of um, in the UK, and so you've gone back to building. But I just wanted to ask, temporarily back to building, hopefully. Yeah. Um, what has been the biggest challenge for you during this period? I mean, we've all, I think, experienced suffered yeah. some uh, people health wise, but different. You know, there's different challenges for different people. Well, obviously, it's always. I think it's always a big challenge. Is the unknown, isn't it? Is always a. That yeah, I know it's yeah. in a major part. I think that's always that sort of thing that, you know, it's about the limbo situation, and of, I and which that, I think yeah. brings on a lot of the anxieties and yeah. 
and whatnot. But I mean, this one for me has this been third worse. Lockdown, this third one yeah. has affected me more, can I say, mentally and whatever than than the last, the first one. I think with the first one, Steve was where. We'd gone out on my mates. It was 52 of us went to India for a friend's 50th oh, right. yeah. uh, for the first week. A lot come home and then a lot of us all went down further south and stayed for another couple of weeks nearly. And so it was all being talked about. What was And obviously I was still working in the cab prior to going and it, it was already out there by then. Yes. You know, so it was all a bit different by then. It was changing. Yeah. The streets were different. It was all very... So I was just... All, all I had in my mind at the time was, oh, let's just hopefully don't get it and still get the holiday or whatever, you know, and get away. Yes, yeah. So we get out there and you, you sort of switch off from it. Well, then more, the further you're in the holiday and you're hearing about flights that are being stopped and they might go into lockdown. So then it's, oh, are we going to get home? And But to be honest with you, when we come back, like I said, around the 19th, 20th of March, come back, it, the weather was nice here. <laughs> I still had my holiday head on. I was still yeah. on the beach. We had, yeah. And it's all, oh, you can't go to work for it. Well, I went out. I went to work. And then they'd done the major lockdown. I went out on that weekend. And then the following Wednesday, yeah. the 24th, of, they locked down. And then it just went yeah, like well, that. We went, we, that Saturday, we went to the last West End show with Tina Turner in the right. West End. Yeah. And it was like, well, you know, is it right to go out and do that? Well, we don't know the future, so we're no, just going exactly. to try and stay as normal as yeah, we can. Exactly. And then literally the Tuesday, I think they they locked down or they announced it, and it's like we've just gone from. And then that was the last. That was the last we, Tina Turner in the West End. We was away with friends. Sure. We we're, we're sitting in this tropical, beautiful beach yeah. bungalows we've got underneath the palm trees. Beautiful food, beers, just great weather, <laughs> and they're all. Bulk buying on their phones before they get home with Tesco's and toilet rolls. And I'm saying, well, what are you <laughs> we doing? Do it, yeah. I'm not, and it was all because we had, like, obviously, we had a WhatsApp group while we were there because we was on different parts of oh, okay. where we were because then many of us were there. So we're all keeping it and everyone's on it. And in the end, it was even my, my nephew went because he worked for my friend Rob, who, who, whose birthday it was. He put on there and he said, Look, guys, sorry, but I'm on a holiday here. I don't need to hear this constant yeah. stuff about toilet rolls, the, the, the thing. We, it's not affecting us at the moment. We'll deal with it when we get home. Yeah. So got back and yeah I mean and like I said I think where we still had that beach mentality going on the weather was nice April and March mm. April we had a great early yes. part of the summer or spring did, whatever you call we? it and other than not having a garden mm-hmm. you know and it, it is you know I've got an 18 year old son who's just come his first year at university he's back home and it's not the biggest flat in the world and he's getting bigger and bigger and eating and eating <laughs> you know so yeah that first one sort of and I think, it was, again, the unknown of thinking, oh, this would be done soon. I think everyone thought that, didn't they? I you guess know? there was that camaraderie. We were all yeah. in this together. But then yeah. after that, I guess with the, the, you know, with the summer then and then things opened up again, yeah. I guess it was, like, it, we, it was like we were set up to think that things would return. And then, then it's, that's when the uncertainty yeah. came. At least we could like, now I'm just giving up trying to predict because I just don't know. Yeah. And yeah, no, I think that's an, it was a bit of that same sort of attitude. At the end of the day, what can we do about it? Yeah. You and like anything in life, you've got to roll with it, haven't you? You've got to, yeah. you've got to take the knocks and get back up and, and, and do the best you can to deal with it and by keeping keeping it together, really. But this is probably, you know, the, the fact of having to go back to the physical industry of building yeah. has been a bit of a... Because that wasn't on the plan, because you had, you had made really, your plan I didn't think executed, it to come I to that. Yeah. I didn't... Again, with what you're saying with the lockdowns and stuff, I didn't think it... I kept sort of thinking, no, it won't be like, I'll be back to work yeah. in the cab soon. I held on to the cab for as long as I could, mm. you know, because I was renting my cab. First of all, they was giving you a half price rent, but that wasn't really helping you because you wasn't earning any money anyway. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, you so, went from, like, you know, yeah, to nothing, nothing pretty much, business. you know, yeah, doing doing 10 hours a day for next to nothing, really. Yeah. Cover your diesel, maybe, in a bit of pocket change. That You know, it yeah, sort of went boom. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, so that was the, I think that's been quite, and I think more so because it's happened more just before Christmas for me where I had to really come to terms with the fact that I've got to go back into the building industry. Right. I think that was probably one of the biggest yeah. sort of, I don't know, alarm bells ringing in the sense of, oh, Christ, this is actually happening now. And how do you feel, how has it felt though actually going back in there once you it's made right. that decision? There's, 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 there's parts of the building trade, the banter and stuff on site yeah. is good. yeah. So, but as an older guy going back in. But as now. an older guy, it's, yeah, and again, as an older guy, the physicality is harder. I mean, you look in good shape, don't get me wrong. No, but I mean, generally speaking, it is. But I feel it's not just, but I do, the physicality side of it. I'm, right. I, I'm still trying to do the same things, probably not as quick, but doing them, but feeling it more when I'm getting home and I've had my bath and I sit on here for 10, 15 minutes. And then when I go to get <laughs> up, it's like, oh, 
Christ, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's, yeah. So for you, that's not sustainable then? No, and that was one of, again, like I said earlier, it was probably one of my other reasons that I was trying to look for something that I could do later on in life. Yeah where I could work into my 60s all right and maybe beyond if need be and I'm not brutally battering I'm up at all hours working in weather and mm. and, 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 and in a physical repetitive sort of stress injury type of job mm. and I yeah and I'm 50 51 this year and okay. I mean, yeah and you Is haven't it, you, you haven't got the fire in your belly for mm. it anymore either you know mm. it's not yeah it's, it's just not, it's just a means to an end then is it at the, yeah, yeah 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 especially and it, when I know the other side now. Yes. All right, it might be a bit of a lonely job and you've got to put in the hours yeah. Yeah. in the cab trade, but I could play golf four times a week and it wouldn't affect my shifts. Wow. I can I can go fishing if I want to. I do. I can get Monday, Tuesday, I'll get up and do the gym, have a nice shower, go to work, yes. do my banking, off to work. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, I get up early, first tea time at Richmond Park, I'm on there, six, half past six, round the golf, home shower, and then go and do me 12-hour shifts on a Thursday and Friday. Sounds like a good day. Well, a couple of days, yeah. You know, and this is the difference of the yeah. job and still earning the money I feel is reasonable enough money to be to earn, you know, mm. and uh, and have that... I don't know, it's, it, even though as a bricklayer, I'm still sort of self-employed in the sense, but I have got a client to answer to or another subcontractor that I'm doing the brickwork yeah. for I, I have to be on site and it's site. their job I guess effectively and I have to be on site with the cab if I decide to go and have a couple yeah. of beers with my mate and it becomes one of those spontaneous ones where you was only going for a couple next thing you know you're falling out <laughs> of public closing yes. I can come home without the pressure of thinking I'm supposed to be on site in the morning stinking a booth yeah. I can come home and sleep all day and go work in the and evening and have a bit of flexibility yeah. mm. it just takes so much pressure away from you at the job yeah. Yeah. And is it big building sites you've been on? No, late? I'm back. I've I've got that opportunity. I've got friends that are still in that industry that I could right. go on to their sites now and work, but I yeah. don't want that. No. I don't want to, they're going into central London on trade. I'm just doing, I've got a little firm that I've got in with recently that do, we're doing extensions really. So, okay. yeah. Fair enough. Suits me. Okay, cool. I'm on my own really. Yeah. When the job, like a bit of price work I do, but I'll do most of it up to sort of, bandstand level on my own and then once I get above and I'm off the ground working I'll get a labour in for the week to finish off the job with me so I haven't got to keep getting up and down ladders to get my gear you know okay. but yeah it is what it is yeah. and you've got to do what you've got to do and so what well I think I know one thing I was going to just change the subject again in terms of you touched on like you know your free time and leisure and yeah. you know what your passions are and obviously it sounds like you like you like to get out it's like you mentioned golf and fishing yeah. but I also know you're you're an Arsenal fan yeah, we, we talked holder, about that yeah. b- b- beforehand yeah. um, so that's um, another so love of my life yeah so is that your big passion football yeah I love football yeah yeah yeah, yeah I've got lots of passionate things I do in my life but football's one of the biggest yeah and the Arsenal is is my really it's my social life now do you know what I mean yeah. the days of clubbing you know you might have the odd party once a year that somebody's 50 mm-hmm. or whatever you might go to or a wedding but on that side of things, that's really been put to bed. So my sort of going out would be going to the Arsenal once, yeah. twice, you know, once a once a fortnight. And you'd make that an occasion with like, you know, a couple oh, of drinks yeah. at the That'd pub be and that up, sort of thing. Yeah, that'd be me, a bit of food, drinking the pub, going back into the pub after the game. Yeah. yeah. Generally, yeah. And with and the boys, it would be our sort of bit of bond, our bonding time where we all get together. And, and there's five of us that are all from South London, South West London, have sat together for 20 years or oh, more. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. But what, 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 given your South East... What what made you become Arsenal? Well, my grandparents on my mum's side, uh, Violet Shoot, and on that side, they all they were from Rotherhithe, and they all worked at the the Arsenal when it was the Arsenal factory that made all the, the, the that's where the because Arsenal was a factory team. They were Dial Square and played at Plumstead Common, but then they sort of became a factory side, and majority of the players worked at the Arsenal. Oh, the players actually, were, I guess, would get back right back. Because it was a yeah. factory team. That's where they howled from. Before and they made ornaments, I guess. Hence, they made the, the bombs and everything. Hence the, the, the gunners. Yeah the, yeah, the gunners, which is the down at... Uh, I keep forgetting, the cab driver keeps forgetting where we're talking about. <laughs> you've, you've been out of it too long. You need, to get, you need to get back into street it. street names. You need to get back into street it, hopefully. Names, yeah. But uh, down at Woolwich. Woolwich, uh, yeah. yeah. To that, okay, yes. So they Arsenal howled from South East London originally. Plumstead Common was the first place. See, I didn't know that. That's why Tottenham called us squatters. Oh, I see. Yeah, because yeah, they're, the, they're, the, they're, the, they're the, they reckon they're the true team of North London. We we just squatting over <laughs> I there. I see. Now, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, me naively. I mean, I know, I know the background gunners thinking that they're on my feet. You know, factory yeah. guns. But 
So yeah, I mean, if you've got any American listeners, again, you know, we're talking soccer, you know, soccer, yeah. yeah. But and of course, the Gunners are then called. If you're if you're an Arsenal fan, because the Gunners you're called a Gooner, right? That's yeah. right, yeah. Gooner, yeah. So, so you're which, a gooner. which is yeah, comes from the Gunner, yeah, it's yeah. a Gooner, yeah. So, okay. so yeah, so that is a big been a bit, is, and we've missed out. I mean, last week for the Tottenham game that we won, which was great, Sunday. I think we're going to do it again tomorrow because it's another London derby. But we had a Zoom, our, our little lot that all sit together. We done a Zoom Did you? And, and watch all watch the game together through. It's funny because I was thinking to myself, I said to you, I'm free any day on, on Sunday. I was thinking, I bet you won't pick Sunday because of Arsenal. And I've, and I've got Man United on at the FA Cup, obviously, yeah, yeah, later yeah. in the day. So I was thinking, yeah, probably Sunday won't work yeah, out because of football. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I'd put it out anyway. Yeah. No, yeah. I thought Sunday, Saturdays is good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice to have something different to do, just to have a chat, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. No disrespect. I think that might have been her. I just come in, but definitely sort of misses all the time. But she's stumped. You know I mean, she's got a great little business with the driving, and uh, which is ironic that we've both ended up in driving jobs. Yeah, that's interesting. You Funny know, enough, actually, Emma, um, you know, um, you know, mentioned that you know yeah. your wife is a, is a driving, driving instructor. instructor yeah, but she's got and, a great yeah. little business. But she, every time the lockdowns hit, she's been it <sighs> harder course. than anybody. Because yeah, the whole social distancing thing is it's not going to work, is it? No. Yeah. So, well, fingers crossed, and well, I think what. Well, I think maybe we're, we're, we're start to wind things up now, as Claire's back like, yeah. sounds of it as well. But I think it's fascinating to talk. Just, I find it inspiring, actually, for, for just for listening to people who've prepared to make change, know yeah. what they want, yeah. but obviously have got to roll with things a bit. And I think this is all teaching us that we can't just take things for granted, no. can we? We've, we've got to just try exactly. and adapt and roll, roll with this things. Is, more than anything, this has shown us you really the sign of you don't know what's around the next corner. Is, is is in a nutshell with what's happened now yeah. because who would have ever predicted this? Although they've got these people come out the woodwork and say, "Oh, it's predicted," you know, go back and look at what such and such said. But listen, uh, anyone said this to me like you could not you could not go to say Arsenal's ground and there wouldn't be yeah. like whatever the, whatever the capacity is now. You're not allowed around your mum's 60, house. You're not allowed to go around to your mum's or whatever. I just think you know what planet are you on? Yeah, exactly. you, know, you're, you're, you know you're you're like that guy that got into the back of your cab and said that, and, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. that the earth is flat. I'll yeah. be like you're, you know. Yeah. You're yeah. crazy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I think we've just all got a sort of thank our lucky stars, really, that we are still here, and it looks like there's a bit of bit of light at the end of the tunnel yeah, now. Yeah, it feels like there Please is. Please God. Yeah. Okay. Well, fi- final question then. Okay. Where do you see yourself in ten years' time? Where do I see myself? No, even though we've just said like, no, you can't make any predictions and things. Yeah. I'd probably be still driving. Hopefully, driving my cab round London. Yeah. If not, sitting on a beach in Spain, maybe. So you think maybe you might go back to Spain? You've obviously got I an might, affinity, I might, I might, yeah, an affinity yeah, with it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a, it's my second home. Mm-hmm. We sort of. Do you uh, speak Spanish, by the way? Uh, badly. Badly. I can, yeah, I can get by. Yeah. Yeah, I can get by. Yeah. I was a lot better of course. when I was living yeah. there. Yeah. And I've only learned it living here. I never had lessons. I just, you just learned what you picked up. What you pick up and learning and and I tried to. Mix I can imagine Spanish, you were alright. I, I, I tried you're to mix modest. with Spanish people. I didn't want to just have expats as my friends. Right. Because the majority of them are got nothing to say really and it's great <laughs> to be be invited around the spanish people's home especially the thinking people eating their food just 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 great to be in, involved in a different culture and be mm. made and they are so warm and welcoming if you're prepared to put in the time with mm. people you know so uh yeah i think that if i was to go and i think also in the market i mean especially on the property side of things i couldn't we tr- I, my plan was to come back when i came back 20 years ago i had a little bit of money was to get on the property ladder but yeah things happen you know, and then that bit of money dwindles down a bit smaller. Next thing you know, and yeah, we we rent at the moment, and it's uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, it's dead money after dead money." But then I think we're probably one of the only countries in Europe that buy. I mean, you go to Germany, Spain, France, Italy, they still yes, rent. Yes, that's true. Our mentality is a bit different there, and yeah. you know, everybody thinks they're financial whiz kids when the property yeah. market's going up. Yeah. But you know, it doesn't always go yeah. up, and obviously there's a lot of maintenance to go in. But exactly. I mean, at least you're not you're not tied to a mortgage, so you've got well, more flexibility. That. And I, I think guess. that's a bit like me with my cab. Right. It's, it's the argument of do you buy or do you rent a cab? Well, yeah. Well, then you see how I've got an asset sitting on your sitting outside on on, on the street now. No, that d- I've got to keep going insured. Down the road, otherwise, yeah. you've got to take it off yeah. the insurance. You can't have it on the yeah. road. Then you've got to find yeah. somewhere to store it. Yeah. With uh, anything with the cab, the money I paid a week for my cab rent covered my insure everything right. if it breaks down they've got to come and get it and give me yeah. another cab if i need a new tire if i need the oil topping up that's all covered yeah in my 220 pound a week i pay okay so maybe then i'm just thinking perhaps it's perhaps 10 years time we could see you as a, as a taxi taxi driver in um Mate, in Ibiza. No, mo- no what you might see is yeah. me as a taxi driver in the winter months here and laying on the uh, beach in Ibiza in the summer that would be nice yeah or in spain maybe well uh, but that's what i was going to say because i think that if i've got any 
sort of aspirations for buying yeah. anywhere. I think it's probably be you can get a lot more for your money in Spain than you can here. Yeah. Would it be on the mainland or would it be? Yeah, I um, think it'd be mainland. It mainland. wouldn't be Ibiza. It's yeah. too, Ibiza's too too easy for for getting diverted, getting into, distracted, distracted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. I, can, I think I can imagine Ibiza is quite expensive being an yeah, island it's, as well. It's, full, it's an absolute. Yeah, it's more. It was expensive back in the day when I was there right. in the 90s and in yeah. uh, 2000s. You know, so it's and it's gone through the roof now. But mainland, somewhere where there's a few golf courses. Mm -hmm. Nice bit of beach. I don't have to be living on the beach. I don't mind them. We lived in the mountains in the beach. I wouldn't mind a little place inland a little bit more, a little car and yeah, golf, well, golf and yeah. That would be all right. Well, well, if you do move up there, we'll or the other way around. Definitely stay in touch with me and Emma though. You can come and <laughs> we can do another podcast <laughs> yes. from, from Spain. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to raise my glass to you and, and say, to you, say thanks well, thank very, you very much. much. Thanks for being on the show and thanks Cheers. for being a great guest You're and uh, sharing your story. Good luck with, with it all. Thanks very much. No problem. Cheers. Thanks so much for listening to Marriott Side Trips. And thanks again to Mitch Cohen for making my life easy. More about this episode, including details of Mitch and some of the places and things he mentioned, can be found in the show notes at marriottsidetrips.com. That's M A R R I O T S sidetrips.com. I don't have any sponsors like the big flash shows. Well, not yet, so I thought I'd sponsor myself and mention my reluctant Pilgrim books one of the first fictional series of stories to be set against the backdrop of the mystical Camino de Santiago pilgrimage. It's the story of young Diego, a talented flamenco guitarist who unexpectedly finds himself on the pilgrimage, a journey forcing him to confront his place in the world. Books 1 and 2 are available on Amazon and all popular online and offline stores. Also, if you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, share it with your friends and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or your favourite podcast service. Reviews really help spread the word. Well, that's it until next week. In the meantime, take care and perhaps take a side trip out of your daily routine because stories and life do not evolve in a straight line.